Hello, and welcome to today's edition of Mama's Got Style, how upgrading your look will elevate your business, get you high paying clients, and increase the fun factor in your life. Today, we're going to be speaking with Troy Beyer, who actually needs no introduction, but Troy, how are you? Hi, good morning. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm so honored and privileged to be speaking with you today. It's such an honor. So thank you for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. My pleasure. So your resume is just so impressive, right? You have a successful Hollywood career, you're a best-selling author, you're a seriously educated woman, like really, <laughs> and you're a mom on top of all of that. So tell us what you've been up to and what's the secret to your success? Uh, so what I've been up to, I'm always up to something. Right. <laughs> really, my sister said the other day, do you ever stop? And the answer is no, I don't. Right. Um, I'm few really amazing things right now, but primarily I've been working on a show called Heels on Wheels. Nice. And yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a reality show for, by, and about single mothers. Mm. Uh, and the premise is they're single mother experts who are rescuing single mothers in need who are struggling. Wow. So we actually, it's, it's like, um, you know, um, a home makeover, but it's a, a, a soul makeover for, mm. for struggling single I love that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's going to be airing soon, like in the next couple We're just of months. To shoot. We're actually in pre-production right now. Okay, okay. So we can look out for that. Yes. So, but that's, that's what I'm working on today anyway. <laughs> yes. And I know you told me we had a little conversation on Facebook about how much you've been involved with Landmark, which I'm in the midst of dealing with that too. And an amazing program. Yeah, what, are you doing? What, what courses are you taking at Landmark? So I took the forum, I took the advance, I took, a, I'm in the middle of my second seminar, and I took the SELP, and then I'm also taking the introductory leaders program this year. Oh, you're in introductory, really? Yeah. Wow. You, you're busy, busy. Yeah. That's a, that's, that program is, that's not made for the light heart people. That's what I've heard. <laughs> so but that starts in March for me. Have you started the program yet? It starts in March. Wow, good luck. <laughs> so you've taken that. Any words of wisdom? I that? that program. Oh, wow. So, yeah, any, any words of wisdom before I dive in? Yeah, words of wisdom. When the, when the going gets tough, just remember why you took it. Mm. Get back to your why. Like, you got to really be clear. To complete that program, you have to know why you're taking it. Yeah. You're going to come up with a thousand reasons as to why you shouldn't finish it. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, because I know. So, yeah, your why for taking it needs to be huge. Okay. Yeah, and I feel like it is. Like, I, when I was in the SELP and they showed us the program, like, the video for it, it just spoke to me. I was like, wow, like, that's it. Like, I haven't had anything really, really speak to me in a while, and that totally spoke yeah. to me when I watched it. Well, that's what my leadership was born out of that program. Oh, awesome. Okay. I wasn't a leader until I took that program. I was a follower. Hmm. Interesting. And after I took that program, I've been a leader ever since, even by default. If we're on a bus and the bus, there's an emergency, I, I feel like for some reason it's my job to get everybody off the bus safely. Yes. Okay. That's how leadership organically started to show up for me. So. That's awesome. <laughs> well, great. Thanks. How did you like SEOP? How did you like SEOP? I, I liked it. I mean, I'm good in a community and, you know, I like being with people and I'm, I, don't, I can't say that I've ever been so much of a follower. I think I'm a laid back kind of person, but if something happens, then I don't mind taking, you know, a little bit of leadership, but I'm not like automatically like, yes, I'm the leader. <laughs> like, I don't necessarily default to that, but if it, the need arises, then I will. Um, so I, I created a pro, um, my project was called no strangers. So when I was in New York one day, I saw a restaurant. It said, there are no strangers here. There's only friends we haven't met yet. And that really resonated with me because I'm thinking, yeah, you can meet somebody and they could end up being your best friend, your business partner, your husband, your wife, whatever. And I thought that's so cool. So I wanted to change the way that people, um, occur for each other, like, you know how when you meet somebody and it's all about, oh, what do you do and where do you live and where do you work kind of thing. But I wanted to have people ask questions that were not creepy or intrusive, but a little bit more 
um, some substance, not just, you know, like what's important to you? What are you up to? What, you know, like I asked you, what are you up to now? Like what's going on in your life? How are you contributing to the greater landscape of the universe? You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. And it really starts to get people to think. So I had a, an event where we did that and we did the be with people exercise from the advanced and just asked a bunch of different questions and people really enjoyed it. It was just, you know, not the status quo. Who's your, who was your leader? So Denise, Denise, what's Denise's last name? I can't remember her last name. I know my, Barry Terry was my very first forum leader. I loved him. He was just awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love I the SPLP for a while too. Yeah, you were saying that. And that's an incredible program to lead. Well, so no, I led the ILP and the SPLP. Yeah, I can't even imagine. <laughs> you but, were, but they're both amazing programs. Yeah. Yeah. So you're leading one. Uh, well, you know, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I mean, I'm always up to something too, but that's, that's an incredible responsibility to be leading people in that way because in, you're really responsible for people after you start taking something like that on. So we'll see. Yeah, you look like you got that vibe though. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm always giving people thoughts and advice, sometimes unsolicited, sometimes asked for. <laughs> so hopefully it's all for the greater good, not to be telling them what to do, but just, you know, if they look like they're struggling to give them a little help, that's all. Strong suggestions. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so what is, what has been, or what is your biggest challenge in building your business and your career? Um, I think my biggest challenge, honestly, is getting compensated for my efforts. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm sort of like a volunteer for life. You know, right. I volunteer, yeah. I volunteer at Landmark, I volunteer, I just volunteer, volunteer. So, mm -hmm. and thank goodness I've made really great investments in my life, so I've been able to do that. Yeah. But really finding a way to make money doing what I love. That's been my biggest challenge to be honest with you. Right. And that is, uh, you sound like you're a creative per kind of person like me and that's the trap of the creative person, right? Like we're always yeah, exactly. coming up with stuff and not figuring, not knowing how to get paid for it or not um, being able to communicate the value to people, I guess, maybe, or just assuming they understand the value and you know, when they don't, it's still. Yeah. I think for me, it's, it's declaring that there is a, a monetary value to it. For me, mm. it's so spiritual and it's personal. And I, I right. feel weird for what I consider to be God's gifts. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. so like, it's what I do. It's the air I breathe. And it's just been really hard for me to put a price tag on that. But I'm getting over that. Yeah. <laughs> As I finish my doctorate and I'm looking at, you know, how much money I've put into my education. I'm like, no, nah, y'all get ready to pay. <laughs> I know that's right. Two thousand yeah, so. is about getting paid, but helping but getting paid, you know, for your efforts. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And I think that's a big challenge people people have, people like us, you know, like you yeah, said. That's true. Um, so how do you think style supports a woman in her confidence and her self worth? Well, I think style ties in with uh, identity, with our identification of ourself. True. So in, in many ways, it's it's a huge part. Mm -hmm. of, even if your style is no style, right? right? That's a, <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. That's I a, think that you know, and also first impressions are impactful. So when you walk in a room, you have a style, you make an impact, and that becomes a context of who you are for the people in the room. That's so true. I, yeah, it's really important how you show up. Absolutely. Yes. Got it. So how do you suggest that a woman go about finding her authentic style if even when she has no style? I think you just have to find what you love. If you love white t-shirts, wear them out. If you right. love, wear, wear them out. Like I'm a white t-shirt person or a white cotton shirt. I love white cotton shirts. It's just what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I think you just got to find what you love and really embrace it, you know? Yeah, that's true. I'm a dress <laughs> girl. Bless you. <laughs> Yeah, you, I, you look like a dress girl. I'm a total dress girl. Sorry. 
you wear heels, right? Yeah, not as much as I used to. I used to wear heels all the time. And then I've gotten into this thing where I was running around so much that I found flats that I loved, like gladiator sandals and different types of boots. So I kind of fell into that. I mean, I still have a lot of heels and I wear them, but not as often. <laughs> but I love dresses because it's an instant outfit. Like you don't have to find a top that goes with the bottom and it does this actually look right. Does it match? Does it like, because I'm short waisted, but I have long legs. I'm literally only five, not even five feet. So, you know, I'll end up looking cut up in two pieces. So I love dresses because it's just like, hey, I just throw it on and it's good to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. You must have pretty knees. Uh, yeah, they're okay. They're, they're not looking old lady yet. <laughs> but, you know, we're, I'm on yeah. the slow. I'm on the, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm starting to have pretty knees. Usually, yeah. And. Two, I wear a lot of long dresses now, too, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I used to wear um, a lot of shorter ones, but now I'm into the kind of goddessy long dresses, so the knees don't have to, I don't have to worry about <laughs> I did that one summer. My friend and I decided one summer that we'd wear summer dresses all, year, all summer long. I bet that was fun, and just all different colors and styles, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was easy breezy. Yeah, that's and that's how I want it to be for people with dressing. Like, you know, just know that find something, a particular style or whatever that works for you and just rock it because then you don't have to think about it. You can put your clothes on and forget about them and then have confidence when you're going about doing whatever you're doing, speaking, dating somebody, a business meeting, and you're not like, oh my God, I shouldn't have worn this and <laughs> pulling and tugging, you know, all of that. That's really important. You know, I'm also into colors. I get my colors done. So I, I want to know what colors match my energy. So mm -hmm. that, that falls into style for me. Once I have my closet and it's coordinated according to my colors that I had right. done for me, my color analysis palette, mm -hmm. I can do everything and I feel great because I know that I'm in my colors. Right. Yeah. That's two, one thing that I tell people fit is queen. Like if it doesn't fit, period, you can't wear it or don't buy it. But color is also the princess because you can have something that fits great, but if it's the wrong color, it can make you look kind of not healthy. You know, bright color makes you look vibrant and youthful and all those things. So they do go together for sure. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, how do you, what, sorry, what are your five go-to items in your daily style routine? I know you said you like white t-shirts, but what else do you like as far as style and makeup or anything in that realm? Well, always white t-shirts, um, mm -hmm. yoga pants or sweatpants. Mm -hmm. Did you say five? What are my five go-to? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I have five. Your um, glasses look like one. That's your yeah. style. Always wear my glasses when I don't feel like doing all my makeup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and baseball caps. Yes. You look like you're a good base. It doesn't work for me. My head shape doesn't go well, but you look like you have a... Yeah, I rock baseball caps a lot and just, it feels good. Yes, that's awesome. So how has your style changed over time? You know, it's interesting because I've gone through uh, different, you know, as you age, you go through different spaces. I, I had the nose ring and the tattoos. Mm -hmm. And then I got the nose ring and I got rid of the tattoos. Finally, that took forever and a year. <laughs> So I think I'm more, it's interesting because as I started to become more educated, I started to have a different relationship to my appearance. I didn't mm. want to, I don't know. I just didn't want to be hippy dippy so much anymore. It was right. fun. I loved it. It was really cool. But I just like very elegant stuff now. Very mm. simple, classy, and elegant. I'd rather have five really gorgeous pieces from Azadina Lyra and Gucci and Prada mm. than a bunch of junk in my trunk. Yes. Yes. I definitely agree with that. Of course. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what do you do for fun? <laughs> you got to have something that's fun, even if it's watching a movie or, you know. No. Like my sister said to me the other day, when do you stop? And I don't. Here's the thing. What I do every day is fun. I love okay. what I do. I love working with single moms. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, writing my book. I love my research that I do. That I guess that's what I do for fun. And it doesn't occur as fun to anyone else. Right. You know, and 
certainly why, you know, being in a relationship is challenging because he's like, come on, let's go do something fun. I'm like, I am. I'm reading a book by Darwin. <laughs> Well, as long as you're enjoying it, then it's, then like you said, it's your fun. It might not be our, somebody else's yeah. idea of fun, but as long as it works for you, it's perfect. It works for me. I, I like what I do. And I'm actually starting a, a new a business now with a partner on monetization. And that is so much fun. I'm just so into it. So but yeah. it's kind of like the nerdy kind of fun. So um, we have a little visitor here. <laughs> uh, I want to say hi. Let's see. <laughs> This is Jojo. Hi, Jojo. Hi. Hi. Hi, Jojo. How are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I say he's got minion language right now because you'll hear a hi or a whoa or uh oh pop out, but mostly it's just the I don't know. What are you talking about? That's <laughs> cute. Okay, so go see, go find Auntie, okay? His um, he's got a very interesting heritage. His mom is my daughter, of course, is African American, and we have some Italian on my mom's side and some British and Scandinavian. But then his father is Indian, and there's some Creole on his mother's side, so it's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so any advice to moms out there about when you're building your wardrobe and running a business and raising kids, like any words of wisdom for all the ladies listening out there? Um, I think you just got to do what you love. You know, yeah. that's, that's the word of wisdom, I think. And I don't even know that's word of wisdom. It should be, it should be a word of common and, you know, it should be common to like, just do, do what you love, do what you love, no matter what. I find that when I don't do what I love, I struggle the most. Mm. And it, my new rule of thumb is if it doesn't bring me joy, I'm not doing it. Yeah. I got if that. If it's not fun, I'm not going to do it, you know? I'm, and yeah, that's it. Just yeah. what you love. <laughs> so do you have anything coming up that um, you want to share with the viewers? Like, I know you have a book out. Can you give us a well, little? Yeah, I'm excited about my book. So tell us about your I'm book. Sorry, go ahead. So oh, tell us about yeah. your book. So I'm excited. My book is called How to Be a Responsible Bitch. And <laughs> I love that. The reason I wrote the book, yeah. I wrote it is because women do, we have tempers. When we get pissed off, we get really angry, right? A lot of us for the most part. Yeah. And some of it is biochemical, some of it is psychological, and then becomes mm -hmm. physiological. And I wrote this book to really help women to temper their anger mm -hmm. because ends up you know it gets us in a lot of trouble it does. Ends up happening. yeah so um especially i work with domestic abuse uh, perpetrators i work with women who've been arrested for beating up their spouses mm. and what i find in most of my cases is that the women were actually responding in self-defense mm. and when the police come they have to arrest the primary aggressor it doesn't matter if you're out, you're you're a work you need know, a responding in self defense. If your partner has more wounds, then you're the primary aggressor, so you're going to go to jail. Right. And a lot of people don't know that, and so I want to educate them on the fact that if you if someone is putting their hands on you, you need to control your temper, you regulate your emotions, and that's what my book helps you to do. Because when you have two people that are possessed by that fight or flight part of your brain, right. it becomes it becomes a competition in strength, physical strength. And we're mm -hmm. never going to be stronger than these males. Yeah. So what we do is we'll try and knock them out or scratch them or hit them, but that'll leave a scar on them. Right. And that makes you the primary aggressor. Whereas if they shove you across the room, there's no proof. So I can't teach women how to be stronger than men, but I can teach women how physically stronger. I can teach them how to be emotionally stronger. Right. And you can handle your emotions and you can handle your response. And if you can handle your response, you can handle your future. Right. Which I think so that's women are a little more emotionally stronger normally than men anyways, a lot of times. I mean, we don't necessarily understand that, but I think that we are yeah. in a lot of ways. I think so, but the pendulum swings hard both ways. We can be yeah. emotionally strong in the sense that we have a higher tolerance and we can mm. be emotionally strong in the sense that we have, we have more aggression. Yes. More aggression emotionally. 
And we get tired of them fed up easy. <laughs> so it's like you something. Have that last nerve. Yes. The <laughs> one day it's just you snap and that's it. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I want to teach women how to not snap. That's really yeah. important. I snap her really bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I mean, definitely something I hadn't thought about. But yeah, I mean, that's definitely well needed for a lot of women in the community for sure. So that is awesome. Um, so Thank anything you. else that you want to share with us before we conclude? And I know you have a website. It's TroyBuyer.com. And people can come go there and find out more about what you're up to. But anything else? Yeah, I also have these really great meditation tapes. They're called Psych Med Solutions, which okay. I'm really excited about. Um, I've taken specific disorders that we deal with as human beings and I explain the disorder from a like from a psychological perspective, and then I lead you through a meditation designed specifically to help you organically resolve that issue. Right. So if you're dealing with anxiety, the first part of the audio tape I explain to you the source of anxiety and why it's present, and then the second part I walk you through a meditation to support you in in really dealing with the anxiety from a very spiritual and organic way. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of those. I just released the psych med solution tapes, audios. That's awesome. You are just the quintessential badass, I just have to say. <laughs> uh, thank you. When are you I gonna, got you. When are you going to be done with your um, doctorate? Maybe today. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, That's yeah. I'm, I'm all but dissertation. Okay. That's good. Okay. I'm an ABD doctor. Okay. What is that? All, all but dissertation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Those, yeah, those are daunting. I'm sure I'm coming from somebody who I like to freelance, write. I've never been a person who was grammar and all of that. You know, my English teacher in college was like, eh, I don't really get what you're trying to say here. I just had a bad time with it it was you know I'm such a free slower so I get it <laughs> that, yeah. that's an amazing accomplishment though for sure thank you thank you yeah. well thanks so much it's been such a joy and pleasure speaking with you today and I'm just so happy and excited for everything that you're up to and we'll definitely share all of your your website where people can buy your book and and if you have anything else coming up let me know and I'll definitely plug that in so everybody can check it out Okay, awesome. And also with you, with your IOP, mm -hmm. if you need if you need a lifeline, find me. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. I'm curious because you're going to be going through so many interesting spaces. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I know. There, the, huh? The, I know the one thing that's already kind of come up is that we have to call people and talk to people about it. You know, and I'm I'm such a like non-salesy kind of person you know in a way i like to talk to people about what they need but not like push and, and sometimes i feel like so i have to deal with that like that whatever that is i i already know i'm gonna have to deal with that <laughs> so right so those are white card call outs the white, white card call okay okay and i can tell you how to make it really easy for you oh nice okay so work, make sure that you do Tuesday nights assisting, okay? Okay. And Tuesday night, you'll speak to certain guests. Okay. Take down the name of the guests that you speak to or that you create some sort of relatedness with. Okay. Then that would be your white card call out. Okay. That's good. So you don't have to do a call. You don't have to do cold calls. Ah, yes. Yes. That does make a lot of sense because I'm pretty good at relating to people individually and then, you know, being able to call them a week later and you'll say, hey, you know, I just wanted to check in on you and see, you know, if you had any time to think more about participating in Landmark Forum and these are some dates we have. That's awesome. Thanks. Great tip. <laughs> that'll I'm make it all easier. Yeah, that'll make it a lot easier for me for sure. Just mm -hmm. my way into it. <laughs> And then the last thing I want to say is that whenever you have apprehensive, when, whenever you're apprehensive about making cold calls like that, mm -hmm. the only thing you just have to make sure is that before you extend the invitation is that you present an opportunity for them. Okay. And you've already done that because you can say, what are you up to? Right. Yeah, that's true. And then it makes them think about it and not like me trying to sell them something or whatever. 
you up to? When they tell you what you're up to, then you can see how Landmark can be a match for the fulfillment of what they're up to. Oh, that's so awesome. You're brilliant. I love that. Okay. Yeah, that helps a lot. <laughs> Sure, for sure. But okay. seriously, if you can stop, call me, okay? okay. I, I know this program inside and out. Okay, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course, you're welcome. All right, well, Bye. thank you so much for your time. Bye. Have a great day, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Okay, all right. Good luck to you, Grandma. Oh, Sexy thanks. Grandma. Glamma. I'm a glamma. <laughs> you are? I'm going to be a glamour too then, okay? Not for a long time now. Yes. All right. yeah. I don't want to be a glamour again anytime soon. <laughs> but yes. All yeah, right. Cute. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.